Let's go to the next question. Um, the next question is a pie chart. So let's look at this pie chart that we've been given over here. Two pie charts. So maybe we are going to be comparing them against each other. We don't know. Let's see. It says that the two pie charts that we have been given here um, show why and how people in South Africa travel. So we are working with why and how people in South Africa travel. So the first thing we can see here is the reasons why people travel and then the modes of transport. Let's look at why people travel first. Why people travel, um, we have for recreational purposes, shopping purposes, um, we've got sport, um, we've got visiting family and friends, business, and so on and so on. So you can see the different things that are happening over there. Religion, 11%. Other and unspecified. So people have other reasons. And it says to us here with this little key that other includes funerals, it includes study, medical reasons, child care, culture, other social gatherings. So already there, at least they've told us um, what that other represents. So we don't have to go and guess what it represents. And it says to us the modes of transport, we've got airplane, we've got airplane there, bus, um, and the different types of percentages, taxi. And then again, we've got other, and again, we've got unspecified. Now I have looked at it and I've got my analysis so I can go and answer my questions um, regarding this particular pie chart. So it says to me, study the two pie charts above and answer the questions that follow. Calculate the percentage of people whose reason for travel is sport. So we want to know the percentage of people um, who are sport. And what's nice about this question is that we've been given percentage throughout. Can you see? Everything else is percentage. And then sport is the only one that has that little question mark going on over there. So how would we do it? First thing, percentage is out of 100. So we're going to subtract all these things from 100 to give us sport. Let's go down. So whenever you have a question like this, don't panic um, in terms of that. So I'm going to just name that 5.1. I'm just going to call it, okay, let's call it 5.2.1, just not to confuse ourselves. 5.2.1. So I said, in total, we have 100%. This is the general rule for percentage. So it's not something that I'm making up all by myself. And now I'm going to go and subtract all those other um, things put together. And what I can, yeah, let me do that actually. I'm going to start with other. So it's going to be 20.7 minus 2.4 minus 18.4 minus 0.7. Minus 42.9, minus 2.8, minus 11. And I've got my stunning. So I just want to see if I've got all of them together. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's go put that in our calculator and subtract 100. Minus 20.7, minus 2.7, 2.4, sorry, 2.4, minus 18.4. Learn how to use your calculator before you go into the actual exam. Uh, minus 42.9, minus 2.8. Minus 11. Okay, I think I've put them all in. And that is going to give us 1.1. Oh, wow. Okay. So that gives us 1.1% for sport. And it really needs to make sense to you. Okay. Does this 1.1 make sense to me? 
I go and I look at the space that's been allocated for sport and I see that it's very small. So 1.1 could be exactly what I am working with. Let's go look at it just to prove what I am talking about. So there's sport over there. This is sport. So for me, automatically, that 1.1 makes sense. And also, that is not even just sport on its own because if you can look properly, let's look at it properly. Sport is just that segment over there because right next to it, we actually have shopping, which is 0, 0,7. So those are the things that we need to look at and it does make sense. It needs to make sense to us. The next question says to us, which mode of transport is used by most people? So obviously, in order for us to see which mode of transport is used by most people, we have to go and analyze. Let's go see which one is the biggest number of them all. So if you look at these two spaces, this one and this one could easily be um, the same size. However, if we look at the numbers, taxi is 36 Point nine and car is 48%. So car becomes the automatic one um, that is used the most. That's 5.2.2 car. And that is two marks, which is really great marks to have. Okay, let's look at 5.2.3. 5.2.3 says, determine the probability again probability and it's just what I had just said in terms um, of probability right I said to you guys probability can be thrown into any question so you need to make sure that you know what you are working with determine the probability written as a fraction so in this case we leave it as a fraction we don't have to go and write it as anything else um, in its simplest form of randomly selecting a person whose mode of transport is traveling by bus. Let's look at bus. So we have bus over there. The best thing or the nicest thing here is that we are working with percentages so we don't have to struggle. So here, if we were asked in terms of probability and leaving it as a fraction, you would just say 7,8 over 100 because percentage is always over 100. 7.8 all over 100 because it is percentage. And I told you there's a little cheaty way that you can have using your calculator to leave something in its simplest form. 7.8 divided by 100. Okay, so it, it gives us that number. But do we really want a number that is so much bigger? We do not want a number that is so much bigger. And that is going to um, not be a fraction. It's going to be a decimal, right? So it means that this is then in its simplest form. So don't worry too much about it. Because if you go and you divide it um, by a decimal, it's going to make it a bigger number. Because I'm already thinking of my 0.2s. And, and let me just prove that to you guys. Because if I say um, 7.8, 8 divided by 0 0.2 is going to give me a bigger number and that is not in its simplest form so this is in its simplest form so do not panic um, if you do get a question like this and you are asked to leave it in its simplest form simplest form simply means that no other number can go into it and leave a remainder but if there's another number maybe, if, maybe two could go into both numbers um, then it would make it simpler so but in this particular case you can't do that 5.2.4 says to us a total of 542,267 people took part in the survey. So now we have the total number of people because we were working with percentages, okay? So now we have the total number of people that are working with this particular survey. And it says to us, calculate the number of people who travel to visit um, family and friends. So we have the percentage, but we don't have the number of people, but we do have the total number of people. Let's look at how we would do a question like this where we have the total number of people and we have the percentage. So we want the smaller number of it. So that is 
5.2.4, we have a total of 542,267. And we want for family and friends, which we need to multiply by 42.9%. And how I would advise you to write a question like this is that I would say to you, therefore, 500 and 42,267 times, and I would say write that like this over 100 because some learners forget to put this percentage in their calculator and then it makes their answer incorrect. So that gives us 542,267 multiplied and then I said to you guys please put it in like that oops let's go back 42.9 all over 100 so it means that it's going to be 232,000 I think it's 630 something let's see 632.5 Three. Let's go see if we are doing stunning. But now you need to remember that people cannot be a decimal. So you cannot say um, they were 232,632,543 people. You cannot have people as a decimal. So automatically we need to round down. We cannot round up. We need to round it down because if you round it up, then you are putting in a person that is, is not whole because a comma is not a full person and you cannot round up a person. <laughs> so you need to round this number down. And if you are rounding it down, you're making it a whole number. And if we're making this number a whole number, it is going to be 232,000. 632. Let's write that down. 232 people. 632 people. So, do you see what I did? I just removed this because we were talking about people. So, be careful when you are talking about people in terms of rounding up or rounding down. It's not like money. Money, you can still have your decimal places, which are cents. But because we're not talking about money, um, we need to make it then rounded down. 